it fundamentally rethinks how we're delivering services. And so it's going to take a pretty sizable culture change in city government, which I know can be difficult. But with your pressure, with your support, I believe we can make change happen in city government. Lord knows it's in a worse condition than it's ever been. And we have to start stepping out of our comfort zone and embracing new ways of doing business. I want to tell you a little bit about how the plan came about. Back in August of 09, I sat down, I looked at our pension expenses, I looked at our city's budget deficit, I looked at our unfunded maintenance needs on our roads and our sidewalks. And I said, we're heading for bankruptcy. So I called the bankruptcy lawyers into my office and I said, walk me through. We need to get ready. And we walked through bankruptcy. And I know some of you probably been thinking the same thing. The city is in such a state of disrepair, maybe bankruptcy is the best option. And as I was walking through the process, chapter nine, not the same process as the private sector with a company going bankrupt. But as we were going through the municipal bankruptcy process, we got to pension benefits. And I said, so what can you do on pension benefits? And they said, nothing. They're given priority protection under the California state constitution. And so the only thing we can do is outside of pension benefits. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate your time because our financial challenges have been driven by our pension system. I need to go and find other alternative ways to fix our financial problems outside of bankruptcy. The exercise was a good one though, because there were a couple things that I like about bankruptcy. Number one, you have to put all of your financials into one spreadsheet, one P&L, ultimately one balance sheet. You list all of your assets, all of your liabilities, you list your projected income, you list your projected expenses, and you have a complete view of absolute cost. The city government, I've been looking at our budgets since before I was on, account, on the city council as a watchdog. The city government does not use accounting like you would use in your checkbook. They decide magically that a number of expenses won't be put on the budget this year, even though we accrue them. And so the bankruptcy process disciplines you to be serious and honest and legitimate about what your true cost of operating is. Second thing I like about bankruptcy is that as you go through the bankruptcy process, you have to file with the judge your spending plan. And the judge isn't gonna accept a press release. The judge isn't gonna expect, accept a nice campaign slogan. The judge will say, no, 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 I want to see line by line, what you're going to do, what you're going to cut, what you're going to change. I want to see a third party, independent, verified cost savings estimate so I can book it towards this plan. I want to see the legal case law, the case law that tells me that you can actually do this and that I as the judge can include as part of my order. It's a comprehensive reorganization plan. So we took those two elements and we said, since we already walked through the bankruptcy process, why not put it into a recovery plan? And that's really how the roadmap was born, was some of the lessons that you would find and the disciplines you'd find in bankruptcy. This is what we were able to produce. In the roadmap to recovery, we identified that when you forecast out your true liabilities and you create that balance sheet, the financial realities become soberingly clear. There is no tax increase big enough, nor is there a service cut deep enough to prevent insolvency in the city if we keep our existing labor costs, our existing liabilities, and try to service them. I'm just going to tell it to you real candidly, honestly, and bluntly. You cannot tinker around the edges in city government. You have to deal with two looming liabilities. Pension and retiree health care. When you add up the cost of these liabilities, the debt is over $3.5 billion, unfunded debt that our taxpayers have to service. 
And when you add up the true costs of servicing these debt elements just this year, just the fringe benefits of retiree health care and pension costs, the number is $370 million or, as a percentage of our payroll, 68% of the city's payroll. <coughs> to put that in perspective, how many of you are a small business owner, serve on a nonprofit board, or do some sort of HR or financial management for your own company, the company you work for? When you add in Social Security, plus Medicare, plus a modest 401k, a nonprofit or private sector operator in San Diego County has a 14 to 16 percent percent of payroll for their retirement benefits. We're 68 percent. That metric alone, that comparison was the most striking number we were able to come across in showing how unsustainable our city's pension and retiree health care benefits are. And the bad news is that's going to keep getting worse. The numbers continue to grow. The costs continue to grow under each of the projections. So you have to make pension and retiree liability reform the centerpiece of any sort of budget plan. You've all heard about our fiscal 12 budget. This plan balances the budget next year and actually balances the budget for every year in the next five years and leaves us in the fifth year with sustainable operating costs. So it not only addresses our immediate challenge of plugging the hole, but I told the team that I assembled, I don't want a one-year budget. I don't want to kick the can. I want to comprehensively solve this. We're going to get this done this year in a comprehensive manner. How did we do it? We identified 87.3 million in savings in this coming year. That number actually has to be modified from the printed version in the re redevelopment area by transferring convention center debt, we are able to save $93.3 million under this plan. Our deficit is only $74 million. So in year one, we produce a surplus of over $20 million. We produce a surplus actually in every year of the five-year plan. I would rather have a surplus and worry about how to spend it than zero it out and have a deficit and mid-year have to make additional cuts. We are able to do this, again, showing how much is in pension and retiree health care, we are able to achieve $737 million in savings in pension and retiree health care reforms. And in reorganizing the city government and rethinking how our city government operates, $304 million over the five years. And that's after only one year of innovation projects. For example, what do we do with the $304 million? We consolidate some support functions. We subject certain support functions to manage competition. For example, cleaning the bathrooms at parks or cutting the grass, landscaping, done by city employees currently. We suggest that maybe we should open that up to outsourcing or manage competition. Mm -hmm. Auto maintenance, jiffy lube, <laughs> rotating tires, changing the oil, fixing what might break in your car. We open that up to competition. We have an astonishing level of staffing and costs in auto maintenance in the city of San Diego, yet it's not a primary function of government. Information technology, we open that up to, to competition. Collecting trash, we open that up to competition. We identified what we call low-hanging fruit, <laughs> things that if you opened up the phone book, you'd find a lot of bidders willing to submit a bid. And I don't care who wins those competitions. It could be our city employees, it could be the outside bidder. But you, what you will find are cost savings on both sides of the bid process. But the, the lion's share of the reforms do come from pension. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the legal pension reforms that we are suggesting that we implement. You can go to the next slide. Um, in, in presenting any sort of recovery plan, like a bankruptcy plan, you need to commit to certain targets. And so when I said we were producing surpluses in each of the years, we created a formula for how those surpluses would automatically be spent. I don't want city council members, once they start seeing a surplus, surplus to go back to their old ways. The thing about reorganization and bankruptcy 
thing about any recovery plan is sticking with the program for an extended period of time. So for the five year period, we say for any surplus, 25% is what we call fund money. Restore some library hours. Expand some park and rec programs. Fund money, 25% for services. 25% has to go to infrastructure and 50% to debt reduction. We also put pension reforms up to a public vote so that voters know that the pension system won't go out of control later on. You didn't reform the pension and you hold those reforms. And finally, what if the economy recovers? We all want to see an economic recovery. We project very modest revenue growth in our five-year plan. In other words, we don't predict a massive economic recovery. We basically predict a slow ascent. If there is a big recovery, we lockbox it into infrastructure. Because our infrastructure backlog, our infrastructure debt, as you all know from driving on our roads, is significant. It is absolutely significant. We have to start squirreling away money to start dealing with that. Here is our five-year forecast, like a bankruptcy process or a business plan. The sea of red that you see up here is translated into surpluses. And we add money back in to restore browned out fire stations. In year one and continuing in each year, we put money automatically back into public safety. We also want our employees to recognize that they too will benefit from financial recovery. I spent a little over a decade working with federal, state, and local government, the nonprofit world, on employee performance evaluations, benchmarking management reviews and management reforms. You cannot turn any organization around unless you have the involvement and alignment of your employees. 